Hey there YouTube, I am finally getting my CNC conversion on my Grizzly Geo 765 lathe up and running. I'm really happy with the way it's working out. I think I have a, a really nice uh, design here for the kit, uh, but I'm not going to talk about that a whole lot right now. I'll, I'll discuss that in a different video at uh, some other time. Uh, right now, I want to talk about uh, spindle feedback on your your 7x10, 12, 14 uh, CNC lathe conversion. <clears throat> so have a really nice setup. I'll show you a picture of it. Um, let me first show you how it's working. So just because you turn the spindle on doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get feedback when you have this thing hooked up. So it's really important. You have to tell Mach 3 that you have a spindle turning. So I'm just going to give it an M3, let Mach know that the spindle is on, and now I'm going to get spindle feedback. So that's really important. I have spent, when I was first playing with this, I spent hours trying to figure out why I could not get any spindle feedback until I figured out that you need to tell Mach 3 that the spindle is actually turning. So, so there you go. So right now, Mach 3 says I'm going about 93 RPM. The Grizzly tack says 91, so that's pretty good. Turn it up a little bit. So the Grizzly tack is settling in at 310. Mach 3, you know, thinks it's at 313, 314. Not too bad. Turn it up a little bit more. Five ninety three, five ninety six. So that's pretty good. And uh, switch it over into high range. That's working pretty well too. Matter of fact, if I come up here to uh, config spindle pulleys, it's hard to do with my left hand. Pulley number two, okay, same type of thing. So if I fire it up, so the Grizzly Tack says we're at 775, Mach 3 thinks we're at 774. So I'm really happy with that, that's working really well. So let me just show you really quickly how I put this together. So when I first started looking at this, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to uh, do the spindle feedback. Uh, you can see the Grizzly uh, tachometer uses a like a, a photo beam and this little wheel to, to break the beam and that's how it gets feedback. So I was thinking maybe at first, you know, I was going to put my sensor up here and run off the spindle but uh, that started to get complicated. I was thinking, I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna have to make a, a new piece or find you know, some place to mount all this. I just, it got a little messy. So I was thinking like, ah, oh, yeah, there's gotta be a, a simpler way to do this. So I turned my attention down here to the uh, gear or um, timing pulley that comes right off the motor. And that actually, worked out a lot better for me. So I'm using the same, I don't know if you can see it, I'm using the same uh, Hall Effect sensor based um, tachometer that I've shown in one of my other videos. I actually have a little video that tells you how to uh, use a Hall Effect sensor uh, to make your own tachometer and wire it up. It's really, it's really simple. So I'm using that same, same design here and what I was able to do, you know, I really, this, this, it was really easy. I, I went to Home Depot and I found uh, these, these nice little magnets that look like a washer. Can't really, there you go. So you can buy like 20 of them for like five bucks or something like that. They're really cheap. It's like rare earth magnet. Uh, found one of those 
and it like kind of works out perfect. There's already two screws in that timing pulley coming off the motor. It holds like a little end plate on it. So I just backed off one of the screws, put that washer on there with that screw, uh, found a just like literally whatever little piece of aluminum angle I had laying around the garage, cut a little slot on it on the saw, mounted it on an existing post here for where some of the back ears went. And I just dropped my little tachometer up up there, uh, stuck it on with double, double sided tape. Like literally it took me like five minutes to do this. It's kind of a sort of a temporary permanent type of thing, but uh, it worked really well. So I was able to uh, find a spot to mount the, uh, the, the spindle tachometer sensor without really modifying the machine or having to make any extra parts. So uh, worked pretty good. So now obviously doing that, you need to account for high range and low range and was able to pretty much figure out what the, uh, what the ratios were and I'll show them to you. So for low range, the ratio I believe is 4.4 .4. and for High range, the ratio I believe is 1.92. So that seems to give me pretty good numbers. So I'm going to roll with that for now. And if anyone out there happens to know the actual real ratio of the gear reduction inside one of these mini lathe uh, spindle heads, that would be great. Maybe you could let me know, but for now I'll deal with that. Uh, one last point I'll make, so I'm using a uh, TB6560 based um, driver and the logic that comes out of these things is um, it's like positive, negative, positive type of logic. So the, this Hall Effector or Hall Effect sensor design works perfectly for that because you can wire it up as positive, negative, positive. But uh, depending on your breakout board or what you're using, you may need to wire your sensors up with uh, negative, positive, negative logic. So if that's the case, I don't think these Hall, the Hall Effect sensor thing is going to work for you. But if you're using one of these uh, little TB6560s that look like this, that come in the uh, aluminum box, then the Hall Effect option is a really good one. So there you go, turn this thing on, give you one last little look at it running. Uh, there it is, little Hall effect sensor, a couple of mag, or a, a magnet, um, really simple setup, and uh, I'm able to get pretty good results with that. So I hope that helps you out, and have fun working on your uh, CNC lathe conversion.